fighting against diseases. The lymphatic and immune systems play a major role in defending us against diseases. The lymphatic system provides another type of circulation in the body. Many of the organs of the lymphatic system are also a part of the immune system. The immune system consists of organs, cells, and molecules that fight infections. Lymphatic system. The functions of the lymphatic system are to collect the lymph, which is a clear fluid leaked out of blood vessels, and filter it to remove dead cells and microorganisms, which could be potential pathogens and can cause harm to the body. Also, the function of the lymphatic system is to return clean lymph to the circulatory system. Without this clean lymph being returned to the circulatory system, there will not be enough blood volume to keep the circulatory system sustained. The components of the lymphatic system include lymphatic vessels, lymph nodes, tonsils and adenoids, appendix, spleen, bone marrow, and the thymus gland. Lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell made in the bone marrow. These cells are used for body defense. They further develop in the bone marrow, which are known as B cells, or the thymus, which are known as T cells. Pictured here are the major structures of the lymphatic system. Immune system. The immune system is in charge of fighting off infection and pathogens. It does so by preventing attacks. The immune system relies on physical barriers, such as the skin and mucous membranes, to keep microorganisms out of the human body. Detecting invaders. Once a pathogen is inside the body, the circulatory and lymphatic systems transport white blood cells to the infection site. Immune system. The immune system is in charge of fighting off infection and pathogens. It does so by attacking invaders. White blood cells can attract more white blood cells to the site of infection, engulf foreign invaders, spray parasites with poison, and initiate immune responses. Antibodies, interferons, and complement proteins are polypeptides also used by the immune system to attack invaders. Remembering invaders. If you are immune to a pathogen, it means that you will not get sick when a pathogen invades your body. Active immunity. Active immunity is specific immunity generated internally by an individual's body. Vertebrates have two types of active immunity, innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is less specific, providing physical and chemical barriers and recognizing structures associated with common pathogens. It is the immediate first line of defense. It often includes phagocytosis by lymphocytes. The phagocyte, pictured in yellow, is engulfing a bacterial cell, pictured in orange, digestive enzymes will then destroy it. Active immunity. Active immunity is specific immunity generated internally by an individual's body. Vertebrates have two types of active immunity, innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Adaptive or acquired immunity is unique due to an individual's unique responses to their environment. Adaptive immunity takes days or weeks to develop and gives the individual long-term immunological memory, as opposed to innate immunity, which is immediate. Adaptive immunity. Acquired immunity targets new structures on pathogens that appear foreign. When a pathogen is recognized as non-self, and non-self means not naturally a part of the body, it's foreign, uh, by the immune system, Specific lymphocytes are triggered that can mount highly specific responses to the pathogen, destroying it with antibodies or cytotoxic cells. The immune system has memory cells that can mount a more rapid response to subsequent invasions by related pathogens. In this diagram, invading bacteria are engulfed by a macrophage. The macrophage digests the bacteria into little pieces and presents those pieces to the B cell. The B cell will produce antibodies that will attack that specific bacteria based on the proteins that are on the surface of the bacteria and are recognized by the antibodies. Nutrient acquisition and waste elimination. Cells require many different nutrients. The digestive system breaks down food into simpler molecules. Nutrients are absorbed and solid wastes are eliminated after digestion. The excretory system removes waste and helps maintain homeostasis. Digestive system. The functions of the digestive system are 
ingestion, the act of eating, digestion, the process of breaking food down into molecules small enough to absorb, absorption, the uptake of nutrients by body cells, and elimination, the passage of undigested material out of the digestive compartment. Simple animals, such as cnidarians and flatworms, have a digestive compartment called the gastrovascular cavity with a single opening called the mouth. Most other animals have a digestive tube with two openings, a mouth and an anus. The tube is called the alimentary canal. Alimentary canal. In the alimentary canal, food moves in one direction and specialized regions of the tube carry out digestion and absorption in sequence. Food is pushed along the canal by peristalsis, rhythmic contractions of smooth muscles in the wall of the canal. The alimentary canal is divided into the following regions, mouth, where food enters, pharynx, the throat region, esophagus, channels food to a compartment such as the stomach, intestine, the main site of chemical digestion and nutrient absorption, and the anus. Undigested material is expelled through this region. In addition to the alimentary canal, the digestive system contains accessory glands that secrete digestive juices through the ducts. Accessory glands include the salivary glands, which secrete amylase, an enzyme that breaks down starch. Pancreas secretes digestive enzymes into the small intestine to break down food. The liver produces bile that aids in the digestion of fats and the gallbladder, which stores bile. Structural Variations The structure of the digestive system varies based on the functions necessary in various animals. Dentition, an animal's assortment of teeth, varies based on diet. Herbivores generally have longer alimentary canals than carnivores, reflecting the longer time needed to digest vegetation. Many herbivores have fermentation chambers, where symbiotic microorganisms digest cellulose, the grass that the cows eat, for example. Explain the differences in sheep and dog dentition. Urinary system. The urinary system excretes urine and regulates the amount of water and ions in body fluids. In order to survive in any environment, an animal needs to balance its need for water and the disposal of waste. In humans, the main organs of the urinary system are the kidneys. In this diagram, viewed from the front, we see the kidneys, which are, have arteries running through them, uh, renal arteries, and then the renal veins uh, come out, and so that's where the blood flows into the kidneys, uh, where the blood is filtered. The waste products are removed from the, uh, the blood and put into urine, which uh, then travels from the kidneys uh, through the ureters to the bladder. The bladder holds onto the urine until the sphincter releases the urine and the urine is voided out of the human body. Urinary system. Each day, our kidneys filter out about 180 liters of fluid as blood filters through them. This is referred to as filtrate and consists of water, urea, and many other solutes. Of this, only about 1.5 liters of concentrated waste is excreted from the body. What do you think would happen if we excreted all of this filtrate every day? Urinary system processes. Filtration. Water, and mostly any other molecule small enough to pass through the capillary wall, enters the kidney. Reabsorption. Water and valuable solutes are returned to the blood from the filtrate. Secretion. Substances in the blood are transported into the filtrate. This eliminates certain drugs and other toxins. And excretion. The product of the first three processes is urine. This passes from the kidneys into the ureters, which lead to the urinary bladder. From the bladder, the urine passes to the outside via the urethra.